We've reached our fifth and final video of this series on Christian ethics and living our faith publicly. In part one, we saw that God has saved us in a very particular way. That is, He's redeemed us, which means He is restoring us to the call to be His holy representatives today, even now, just as He made us in the beginning when we were made in His image. In part two, we saw that the Bible calls us to practically display our hope of redemption by being people who help redeem others forgotten by society, the least of these, as Jesus says. In part three, we see that in so doing, we proclaim God's goodness, which positively impacts evangelism and invites people to God. In our last video, part four, we saw that God has sent His Spirit to empower us to do just this as we hallow His name. In our fifth and final video, we will conclude with a consideration of who this God we represent is and where He might be found. Let's start by asking this question. Where would you go if you were looking for a lion, a tiger, or a bear? You might say, well, I'll go to the zoo, and that's a practical answer. But let me rephrase it. Where would you go if you wanted to experience a lion, a tiger, or a bear? If you were asked if you experienced an encounter with a lion, a tiger, or a bear when you went to the zoo, you'd probably say, no. If we wanted to experience a lion, we might go to the savannas of Africa. If we want to encounter a tiger, we might go to the jungles of India. If we wanted to encounter a bear, we might set out into the forests of North America. In other words, we would experience that creature in its habitat. But we do not do that because we know the dangers. Nonetheless, it is in their habitat that we find a creature most itself. In the Psalms, the Bible says this about God, a father of orphans and a protector of widows is God in his holy habitation, Psalm 68, 5. If we want to experience God in his holy habitat, we would go to where he is. He is with the orphan and the widow. Remember what we said in part two? This is short for saying God is with those most in need. He is with those who are rejected by society. Who might those people be today? This would be a good question to answer if we want to experience God here and now. This can also be a warning for us as well. If we find ourselves face to face with the least of these in society, we should be careful how we treat them, for God is their protector. To encounter God in His holy habitat without respect for His dominion is dangerous. We should work with Him in serving others. While we might search for God as He inhabits the spaces around those most in need, where will those most in need experience God? We know that God resides in His holy tabernacle. Today, the people of God, the church, is the tabernacle. In other words, when the world searching for God goes looking for His tabernacle, they will find it in us as we live for God together. Just as the least of these are an opportunity for us to be amongst God, we likewise are the presence of God, the tabernacle, for those needing to find refuge in God. Are you and your church community living in such a way that those who are lost and hurting in this world might run to you for refuge, for hope, for redemption? Let us be those people now and forevermore.